you guys, welcome back to another beautiful melanin transformation. So if you want to see how this beautiful look was created, watch to the end. So let's get right into it. So obviously we want to start with carving our brows. Carving your brows is one of the basis in creating a beautiful brows. I just sprayed her face with setting spray this enables the skin prep sink into the skin next i'm applying her foundation i used two different shades of foundation to get her skin match a lighter and a very dark shade so after applying it i just blended it i promise you i i'm not blending it as hard as the video looks but yeah just make sure you blend it in properly to be applying concealer in her t-zone areas under her eyes her jaw her um, forehead the tip of her nose just those places i'm going to be using a lighter shade of concealer in her inner corners and a darker shade uh, at the outer corner So 
before blending i recommend spraying the face again with setting spray it allows it it makes the concealer easier to blend than without like spraying it and it also enables it to sit longer on the face good setting sprays are also like very important for your makeup so now i'm just blending with i was using a beauty blender to blend before but then i switched to my brush so just make sure you blend and blend properly <laughs> So next, I'm going to be applying powder on her highlighted areas. That is the places you used your concealer, her T-zone area, under the eyes, the forehead, the jaw, and her nose. So I'm going to be applying powder there, two shades lighter. I'm going to be applying it in those areas. Um, As you can see, I didn't do a... I intentionally did not do um cream contour. I'm going to be using my powder to contour her face so there's no cream contour but i'm going to be using the powder to do her contour A powder since there is no cream contour you're going to be going in with powder that is two shades darker than her skin and you're going to be using that to do your contour and you're doing this um above her her forehead also um and her chin and also the side of her nose so these are the areas that you are going to be contouring as you can already see in the video so just do that Next, I am applying blush. I don't think it's possible to see makeup without blush these days. I really love how much it adds color to the face. Like, it is such a beautiful look. And to think that a few years back, blushes were, would be, if people see you putting blush in your makeup, it would be very weird. I guess that's just one of the beauties of makeup. It comes and it goes, but there are some bits that are just timeless. But I feel like blush is something that should be timeless. Anyway, I'm applying powder at the rest of her face now, the same shade as her skin, applying it everywhere on her face and just, you know, getting it in there. So next, I'm going to be applying um, setting powder under her eyes so that I can do the brow and the eyeshadow you're applying it there so that whatever foundation falls off while you're applying the eyeshadow does not fall on her skin directly and it just falls on the powder and it will be easy for you to dust it off so that it doesn't stain the skin so that is the essence of setting the face that mostly applies when you are doing your skin before your um eye look and your brows so next i'm drawing her brows and i'm just going to be following the outline of her brow that is one of the reasons why it is good to shape the brow well when you shape the brow well drawing the brow itself will not be so difficult you just have to follow the already the shape that is there <clears throat> now i'm just filling it in you want your hands to be very light 
do not hold the brush at the beginning hold it somewhere in the middle it will help your strokes to be light if you hold it at the beginning you end up having six strokes strokes and you will not get the hair like results you are probably seeking for so next i am going to be concealing her brows when concealing you want to start from the edge do not start from the beginning and use a lighter shade at the ending of your brows and use a dark shade at the beginning Try to also make your hand as straight as possible, as straight as you can make it so that you don't have to, you know, start correcting and miscorrecting or any of those. Just try to take your time. Don't rush it, especially when you are, you know, just starting. Do not try to rush. Just take it little by little. So like I said, do not use the same color of concealer you used at the end at the beginning. You want to use a darker shade at the beginning of the brows. So that's what I'm just using. A darker shade so that it matches with your contour and it doesn't look too separated. I don't know if you get what I mean. So next, I'm concealing the top of her brows with the same color as her foundation shade so that, like I said, there's no difference. This step can also be skipped. If you feel like your brows is perfect enough, I feel like you can very well skip this step, like concealing the top of the brows. I do skip this step sometimes, but if there are things that you should correct, then you shouldn't skip this step. step. now just blend your the things that you have done blend it so that there are no you know harsh lines shadow to be honest when i was doing this look i had nothing in mind i was just like okay let me just move along with the flow so i had cut her crease before then i was like nah i shouldn't be doing that so anyway i'm applying my transition shade now you just want to blend you apply your transition shade on your crease and then you you know blend it out so that is exactly what i am doing
lining her waterline with black pencil. I'm using a gel liner because it's easier to line with gel liners than water liners. Don't make that mistake. I have done that before and I legit cried. So I'm here so you don't make the same mistake. Line with water liners or at least pencil liners. Sorry, line with gel liners or pencil liners. So now I'm dusting off the excess powder all over her face. You either dust it off or you blend it in. So I am doing both. I am both dusting it off where necessary and blending in where, where necessary. So that's the next thing you should do. So I just reapplied my blush because I saw that it wasn't as bright as I want it to be. And I legit love the colors, like the color of blush. Next, I sprayed her face again because you want all the products to sink in plus... Spraying the face after applying your powder reduces the amount of powder on the face so it doesn't look too powdery. So now, over to the lips. I am doing a kind of ombre lips. So first, I lined her lip with a brow, brown lipstick. So next, I applied this pink, bright pink lipstick. The lipstick is Blossom Afro Cheek Palette, by the way. So I applied it on her lips and I'm just blending it into the brow pencil so there, there are no harsh lines. So after applying the upper one, I discovered that it wasn't exactly suiting her black skin. If you are working with bright pink lipsticks you have to know how to apply them properly so your muse does not look weird i eventually overlined her lip with a darker um shade so that it brings it out properly and yeah this is what we eventually have and this is the final look i'm just going to be tying her hair tie now final look i cannot be the only person that is in love with brown skin so i hope you enjoyed it don't forget to like subscribe and drop a comment bye